So, warm welcome to everybody. It's five past uh, two o'clock Zulu. So let's get started. Uh, warm, very warm welcome to everybody to this uh, webinar introducing EDTO Spotlights, uh, one of our new features. Uh, this is actually a series that we're going to start now. So this is one of the first webinars of this series for all our customers and uh, new users introducing our flight planning system. Before we start, we would like to make a little bit of housekeeping. So everybody is actually muted, uh, but we do encourage you to make questions. And the questions can actually, uh, oops, sorry. The questions can actually be done at uh, the right-hand side um, of this presentation. You see maybe my pointer now. So where the two arrows are, just click on there and you can make your questions. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar and all of your questions will be answered via email after the webinar as we don't have that much time. So please, I do encourage you to make all the questions needed and we'll get back to you. So let's get started. Um, our, there we go. <laughs> Um, our presenters uh, today, it's um, myself. My name is Ralph Henschen. I'm a BDM and a pilot, and uh, Rob Randall, who is our head of operation. Good afternoon, everyone. So I would hand over to Rob, and he's going to show you through the agenda, and uh, some of the webinar we'll be doing together. I'll be handling the presentation. Perfect. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We hope to take around sort of 40, 45 minutes of your time just to run through this uh, this nice new feature we're, we're very proud of. So the agenda we have, we're going to construct a long range flight plan that meets your operating approval. We're going to use the airport pair Lima India Romeo Fox, Rome Fiumicino to Kilo Mike India Alpha, Miami International. As our our test our test route, we're going to go through reading, interpreting, and analysing airport fuel, airport and fuel considerations. Then we're going to run through how to confidently pair your briefing pack, you know, so your crews have the confidence, you know, and those safety levels to to complete the flight safely. And just at the end of the presentation, we're going to just touch on uh, configuring your aircraft and look at some of the aircraft settings that that power the feature from behind the scenes. And finally, uh, there will be a Q and A session at the end. We do encourage you to post questions in the, in the chat, as Ralph explained. Um, we're going to hold questions to the end. We have someone else behind the scenes uh, collating those questions, and we'll try and pick the sort of top ones at the end. And any that we don't get to, um, we'll follow up with a, you know, a personal email reply to you. And we will also post uh, the webinar um, online and send the link etc um, so you can recap as well in your own time thank you ralph okay here we go so we're going to quickly just run through uh just flight planning very quickly just to set the scene for this route we're not going to go into too much detail we want to focus on the edto uh, etops so edto is stands for extended diversion time operations that's the all-encompassing ico acronym and it covers the acronyms that you may be, may well be more familiar with such as ETOPS, LROPS, EROPS, that kind of thing but it's an all-encompassing feature so an all-encompassing acronym. So just in the top left hand corner we've put our departure in LIRF and then we're going to enter our destination as well. Okay, there we go. So that's our that's our route across the Atlantic in the top left hand corner, Rome to Miami. Um, when you're flight planning or after you've entered your minimum set of inputs, the system will route for you, generate routes and return them to the user interface. And so we're gonna pick one of those routes to use. Uh, just in the left in the left hand side of the panel now you'll see there's a green square and it will show you that the route is valid so it's been checked with the Eurocontrol 
for the oil control portion of the route out to the oceanic uh, entry point and the route is valid and it may be filed. So we have a good starting point for that route and now we're going to um, add a couple of other things. We need to add an alternate. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to add Miami Opelika, Kiosca Papa Fox. Again, we're not we're not stressing too much on airport choice, you know, operational considerations, etc. In this webinar, we're we're choosing airports to to demonstrate the flow and demonstrate the features rather than go through specific operational considerations or specific you know, operational um, levels of, you know, weather and no times and that kind of thing. We all know that every operator is slightly different. So we've chosen our alternate and we're going to add that into our, into our flight plan. So we've just taken a snapshot there of the route just to show you that if you have a star, so uh, an arrival route into your destination, the color changes to green just so you can depict where the en route portion of your route changes to the arrival, the or transition section and then the route to alternate is shown in blue and you can see that we've added a star for the route to alternate as well and that's to simulate you know being vectored out over over the ocean and landing at, at uh, Opelika so that the alternate fuel calculation is you know realistic and more close to you know real real life you're not you're not going to get a short direct from Miami to Opelika. Thank you Ralph. Uh, just moving down, you know, we can alter the performance profile of the aircraft to climb, cruise and descent. These, these are pulled in from your aircraft settings. So we just touch on those briefly and they're OK. And then we can move forward. We have our fuel and mass and balance section. This is obviously where we uh, specify the breathing and non-breathing cargo um, in the aircraft, passengers and baggage. So just on the left hand side, we've expanded this accordion on the left hand side to expand more options available. So if you're doing a quick flight, you know, you have all your parameters set up and you're doing a, doing a run of the mill flight, so possibly not an EDTO uh, type flight, you can choose to skip these sections and move straight through to filing, but these sections are there when you, when you need them. Uh, if you just skip back one, Ralph, well, just one second. Just showing on the screen there that um, there are different loading points for your aircraft and it's configurable, you know, depending on your aircraft, you can set this up how you need it to be. There's a pop out calculator for passengers and baggage and you can set your own standard weights, winter and summer, to speed up the process of entering, uh, entering your payload. Thank you, Ralph. So now that we've done the basic parameters for our flight, we generate what we call a flight summary. That is the this black um, vertical rectangle you can see on the screen. It's kind of a quick view flight log, if you like, without all the extended waypoint information. It has all the key uh, fuel criteria, the fuel scenario, alternate takeoff fuel, taxi extra, off block, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's your quick view. Of your of your flight, and also if there are any fuel errors or warnings and triggers for your for your flight that need to be corrected, this is where they will show. But we'll we'll definitely cover the idea of warnings and triggers and prompts in a lot more detail um, as as the web as the webinar goes on. Great, just to touch on a little bit of the map, just so we're going to leave these layers on for you, just so you can see them and get used to them. Uh, in the bottom section, we have our radar and lightning layer turned on, and we also have our NAT tracks turned on. Obviously, at the moment, with the, the COVID flight levels across the Atlantic, um, we, we're used to seeing you know, um, three, four, five, six uh, NAT tracks going east or west. Um, but obviously at the moment they're just issuing one or two, so it's a bit of a sorry picture across the Atlantic, um, but just to show you that those, uh, those are there and usable in our system. Thank you, Ralph. Great, so now we're into the meat, the main topic of the, uh, of the webinar. 
So on the left hand side, we've expanded our EDTO section, our extended diversion time operations planning section. And we just, we've just enlarged uh, that so you can see, see what's happening there. So the first section is our EDTO selected range when we have set it to 180 minutes. And then the second section is, is a tick box to show our EDTO threshold. So throughout the webinar, we'll be talking about EDTO thresholds and EDTO approvals. And I will explain the difference and how, we've, uh, and how we denote and how we talk about those things within our system. The two boxes midway down are for identifying our EDTO or ETOPS entry point and ETOPS exit point. And we define an airport to, from which to draw the geometry of our EDTO threshold circle from that, from that, uh, from those points, and then the last three boxes. That's where we enter our eras, our en route alternates, and we ask that they are entered in sequential order, so that the system exactly calculates um, exactly against what your what your inputs are. And then finally, at the bottom, you have the option which is which is pre-configurable to add your route, you know, your route alternate syntax to field 18 of the flight plan. We understand that that's a requirement for commercial operations in many areas of the world, but um, this feature, you can make use of it for private uh, part 91 G um, part NCC operations. So there is that option there, hence why it's a checkbox. Great, so just on the left hand side, we've entered our EEP and our EXP. So these are the two airports that we're going to use to identify the point at which the route travels outside our benign area of operations. So beyond our threshold for normal operations and into our EDTO portion of flight. For most authorities in the world, if not all, this is currently set at 60 minutes at an approved single engine speed. So what you can see on the map now is that we've entered one era on the left hand side. We've entered Lima Echo, Sierra Tango, Santiago in the uh, northwest corner of Spain. As soon as you enter one era, that is what activates the EDTO the EDTO uh, feature in our system. You can see now that the system has drawn a threshold ring. So it's showing you where your the 60 minute circle. And it has also drawn your EDTO approval ring, which is 180 minutes in this example. You can also see now if we move to Miami at the end of the route, that we've also have a threshold ring drawn around Miami as well. Between Miami, and our the edge of our approval ring around Santiago, we now have a red corridor. So this is a very good example of one of the features where, where we're trying to move the game on for EDTO. We're trying we're not trying to match what, what others do. We're trying to improve, demystify and uh, you know and grow grow the feature set and make things easy for you. So wherever you have a portion of your route between your ETOPS entry point and your ETOPS exit point that is not covered and is not compliant and is not is not is not um, recognized we will show that as a red corridor and that's designed to help your flight planners understand that they need to add coverage in order to create a compliant route for planning purposes before handing it to the crew So I, um, I, I very much imagine that a lot of you are very familiar with um, EDTO. It's, it can be a little bit of chicken and egg. You know, do you add your airports first? Do you add your do, do your route first and add your airports afterwards? In this example, we're adding our airports now one by one. So you can see we've added Lima Papa Lima Alpha as our second era, and that's drawn our ring, two rings around the airport. So you can see that the red corridor now outside of Miami that red corridor is starting to decrease now as we add EDTO coverage to our route so we're making good progress that's the main thing the system is reflecting the progress that we're making and this is just a 
just zoomed in of the uh, this area that we still need to provide coverage for. So again, for the purposes of this demonstration, we've used the XKF LF Wade in Bermuda. So now we have three en route alternates, and you can see that the system has generated two ETPs, so equal time points. The first equal time point, just between Spain and the Azores there, and we have a label there. So we're using different color labels for the normal generic route line labels, which are in yellow, and then just helping you depict the EDTO information, we're using black and white. So that's the difference in the colors on the screen there for you. Thank you, Ralph. Yep, perfect. So just, just to um, just to you know add that as concrete in your mind there, we're just joining up the, uh, should you just go back to that um, slide, just one second, Ralph, with the arrows. Perfect. Yeah, just to concrete that information, just you know, really set it in stone. EEP and EXP, we're using, we're defining the the exit and entry from normal or benign operations according to your operational specifications, choosing the airport, and then between those airports, that is the portion of the route which we must help you provide EDTO coverage, you know, to comply with the operational approval. We're adding eras on route alternates to comply or meet those EDTO criteria and those that we've added, Santiago, Lages and Bermuda for the purposes of this demonstration. Uh, don't let me just help you a little, I'll jump in. Uh, so you. as we have now three uh, of our eras and looking at it we said okay we actually have too much coverage so we just deleted santiago and actually with two eras we are fully legal to do this flight so what we have done let's you know, just go back a minute so we just has deleted santiago and with actually these two we are fully compliant so just to make it easier we just created uh, two eras Thank you, Ralph. Perfect. And this is your feature. Over Thank to you. you. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So again, um, my background is I'm, you know, I'm used to using other systems, and I, you know, I think everyone in this call is probably used to use, seeing rings of EDTO and ETOPS and seeing arrows and labels pointing to ETPs, etc. You know, and the short answer for us is that, that that isn't how things have to be. You know, there is other ways of depicting e this information, and there are other ways of of helping users um, plan their flights, uh, particularly for you know these these flights that require an increased level of planning and scrutinization. So what we have done is that we've implemented a feature that we call EDTO Spotlights. And what it does is for each era that we've chosen, for each en route alternate that you've chosen we are building a polygon, a triangle, from your airport to the furthest point, left and right, forward and back, from uh, on your route, as your route passes by that airport. So what this is doing, it is highlighting the portion of the route, or it is showing you visually which sections of your route at certain airports are providing coverage for. So LPLA is providing an EDTO spotlight on your route from the ETOPS entry point to the first ETP LPLA TXKF. So we're showing you that LPLA is spotlighting coverage onto your route and the same called Bermuda. And we'll show you a little bit, some other examples of this, but we really feel it helps, again, the key word is demystify and really improve the understanding of of how Bermuda, how TXKF is working for you. You know, what is it doing for you? It's providing EDTO coverage for this section of your route. It's making it super clear what's going on. Thank you, Ralph. Um, so we have our route now on the screen, and we've done a recalculation. We talked about this idea of a flight summary and we, we touched on the idea of triggers and warnings so it's not good enough for us to you know produce a flight log and some warnings that are hard to read it's not good enough for us to you know make you dig 
for the feet for the figures you need to compare you know and dig uh, and dig for the mistakes um, oh I have a quick question just for the aircraft that are operating in this uh, simulation we're just using a business jet so let's just pretend it's a, a G650 or a you know a global Express G6000 something like that so uh, just had a quick question about that but for the purposes of this demonstration we are treating this as an ad hoc business aviation flight from Rome to Miami. I hope that makes sense. And again, it's just for the purposes of the uh, of the destination of the, for the uh, demonstration. It's actually a Glex. Uh, Global Express. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Great. So the errors and warnings there we have the first error and warning we have is the flight log contains EDGO calculations. So we're prompting the crew and we're prompting the flight planner that they need to they need to perform more checks and you know and do a little bit more diligence for this kind of flight plan. We're now going to go into that in more detail and access the flight log. We can do that in three ways. There's a button in the top left hand corner. There's a button at the bottom flight log and there's also a new tab button on the top right of the screen as well. So we're going to click that and the, then the flight log is going to generate on demand. So this is the flight log, the screen collapses so you can still see that your route is uh, all shown on the screen and now we have our flight log shown on the right hand side. The flight log that's shown is the flight log that you have chosen. So if you have a custom flight log that we've created for you in Rocket Route, that's what we'll show here. So you're not seeing a generic flight log, you're not seeing one version, you're seeing the flight log that, you know, between you and I, we have agreed and implemented and created for you, and that's what you see in the system. And another operator sees their flight log. We have a number of different tabs. So we have flight log open at the moment, so just at the top of the screen there. The second one is mass and balance, so we'll just touch on that and have a look at the aircraft. And um, we can see that we're within we're, we're within limits there. We're within, we are within within the envelope, just so we can confirm that quickly. So we're just just zooming in now, just quickly, just to show you a few bits and pieces of the of of this flight log. Again, the warnings are generated both in the user interface. For the dispatcher and the same warnings are also generated in the flight log so you have uniformity across the system and so you have two uh, distinct chances to catch a mistake which is you know, improving the safety aspect of using our system the warnings can be seen by both the flight planner and by the consumer of the information the flight crew yeah rob sorry if i may uh, Robert yep. has already touched on it. Uh, this is just a demo, uh, one of our many flight logs we have. We have around about, I would say, 80 different flight logs, and we can create a flight log uh, to your operational needs. Over to you, Rob. Thank you. Um, again, I can just just a quick note. I can see on the side of the screen that we're getting some questions in. It's really great to get those questions in, and we will we will try and come to as many of them as we can. Uh, just at the end, so do do keep them coming in. Thank you. Great. So this is a summary page of the flight log for this particular format. We have our fuel table on the left-hand side that you'll be familiar with in various different guises. But we understand, obviously, from an EDTO perspective, there are there are additional fuel parameters and fuel checks that need to be undertaken and need to be displayed to the flight planner and the flight crew. And we're going to go through those now. So the first thing that happens in the fuel and waypoint table, we are inserting critical EDTO junctions along your route. So just at the very top here, and I know it's quite small to see, you can see that the first row says LEST, so Santiago, EEP, so e, ETOPS or EDTO entry points. So we're displaying that to the flight crew. And then if we move down the list, uh, let's find, there we go. So just a quarter of the way down, then we have the ETP1 labeled with the airport, LPLA, TXKF, Lages, LF Wade, Bermuda. So we're adding, adding that information directly into the flight log and treating it as a fuel waypoint 
but obviously it doesn't appear in your flight log because it's not a, it's not a navigational waypoint. So there is a difference there. It appears in your in your fuel and waypoint table, but it doesn't appear rightly so in your flight plan. Moving down, we get to the end of the fuel and waypoint table. So if you had a normal flight, you know, in a in a normal area of operations, a benign flight, this is where your flight log would end. And then here begins our EDTO summary. Now, again, this is something we're very proud of. Um, you know, my experience, uh, you know, I think Ralph might jump in here. You know, I've seen some of these summaries that are just, they're so difficult to read and they're so difficult to understand if it's good or bad and where shall I look and, you know, what what is the comparison? You know, what is safe and not safe and you know, where's my margin for safety, et cetera. So we've worked hard on this layout, you know, to really try and move things forward and bring you something that is that is understandable and, and usable and has the right level of detail, um, but also gives you, you know, clarity and a, and a summary and so on. Yes, absolutely. So from my pilot's perspective, I think I've used uh, over the pond uh, every single one that is there out in the market and it's just dreadful. So this is really an absolutely nice feature for a pilot, clear information. What information do we need? We're going to drink down and explain a little bit more, but it's not some uh, dotted text like we had before, and we had to look for what is what. I think we've done a, actually a nice job and a clap on our shoulders. But for a pilot, from a pilot's perspective, this is the best I've seen so far. Uh, so good feature for us. Let's go and and, and show you a little bit uh, in detail over to you. Rob. Great, thank you. So this is the summary section. Um, of for EDTO. So again, we'll just highlight a couple of things here as we go through. So in the top right hand corner, we highlight the approval that's been used. In this example, we're using 180 minutes. So that's clear for the crew, you know, what they're using. The second section is we need to confirm to you that we have all the data provided, that there's no errors. You know, there's no errors under the hood, which is blocking us from, from creating what we need to. So we are confirming to you everything under the hood we have all the data and all the information that we need to fully calculate this so we have key geometry so we confirm to you that we can draw everything as it should be drawn and then we have our scenarios which i'm sure you're very familiar with our our legal scenarios one engine inoperative drift down better known as then depressurization with all engines operating and then depressurizations with one engine inoperative and then we also include a fourth scenario, which is actually becoming more and more prevalent as aircrafts obviously become more and more reliable and the traveling population increase, you know, their age the demographic increases. And that is that is a medical scenario. So that is where we have, you know, you have a crew member or a passenger that needs medical attention and must get on the ground fast. You know, so the aircraft is operating okay and you can provide a medical scenario and I'll just touch on the settings there you know you can use the cruise profile for this medical scenario that you've chosen for your flight or you can actually set a, you know a custom profile for medical you know and you can turn up the gauges you know and put in your max cruise speed for that medical diversion if you want to just so you have the fuel figures for the max cruise speed available to you uh, the third box era aerodromes in the planning phase and the flight phase, we need to establish a weather window for our ETPs. We need to understand when is the when is the earliest time we can arrive at these locations if something uh, went wrong theoretically, and when is the latest time we could possibly arrive from a planning perspective, plus one hour. We've added one hour um, to um, pay attention to FAA and EASA guidelines there just to allow for delays on departure so the way that this works is and we won't go into too much detail here but for the earliest arrival calculations we are using a an emergency scenario which gets the aircraft to the destination as as early as possible or as quickly as possible for the latest arrival at the various etps we are selecting the scenario which is the the slowest flight time or the longest flight time and we are using that to calculate the latest arrival so it's a dynamic calculation based on 
fastest scenario and slowest scenario, depending on the earliest or the latest arrival. And then the bottom section, most important section is, there's tons and tons of fuel calculations for EDTO. There are scenario calculations that could be up to eight, you know, per year, you know, per ETP, you know, four calculations to one airport and four calculations to another airport. And then, so you can have a, you have a series of calculations. It could be 16, 20. And, but you need, we need to understand, you know, what is the most important calculation? What is the, what, what and when is the place that has the highest risk? And how can we mitigate that? So we calculate what we call the EDTO critical point. The critical point, we define this as, and I need to be very careful here. It is the difference between the required minimum fuel on board for diversion compared to the planned fuel on board. We look at all the fuel scenario calculations and we make this determination. So we look at the, the, where the margin between the required fuel for diversion and the planned fuel on board is the smallest. So where that margin is the smallest, that is our critical point. So we can see here for the purposes of this demonstration that our most, our EDTO critical point has been defined as our EXP, flying from EXP to LF Wade, Bermuda, our most penalizing fuel scenario at that point is depressurization and one engine inoperative. And the minimum fuel required on board at a critical point is uh, nearly 7,000 pounds. And we have eight and a half thousand pounds on the aircraft. Therefore, we require zero additional fuel. So we're taking a multitude of individual scenario calculations comparing and analyzing them and presenting the worst case scenario to the flight planner and the pilot and comparing that to the fuel on board. You know, so we are you know, we're helping you get to a point where you can make a decision about whether the flight has been planned correctly or incorrectly. This, uh, moving on from this, we, you know, uh, you can expand and go into the various sections. So here we have our, you know, our breakdown of scenarios from our EEP, EDTO entry point, which was uh, in this example, Santiago, various route and time information in the top right hand corner, planned fuel, elapsed time. And we also show you the EDTO route segment, which for this demonstration is seven hours and 53 minutes, and that's about 3000 nautical miles. Then we have our scenarios laid out underneath. And we have our flight time for the scenario, the ETA, the flight level, the fuel required for diversion, the total fuel starting from the departure point, the landing fuel and the landing mass so that you can do um, ad hoc runway performance calculation based on that indicative figure. Uh, if you are diverting, you can get ahead of the curve and uh, do landing mass uh, calculations as well. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah, and just uh, just to show which is the worst scenario or the most critical one. So we show this one, I hope you see my pointer. So it's, as we said before, depressurization with one engine inoperative. And we show this in italics. We've already got some feedback from our operators and we actually might draw draw a box around this. So it's a little bit hard to read. So again, feedback is always welcome. Mm -hmm. So I've just had a, there's just been a quick question about the EDTO critical point, and we you know, we will definitely come on to that at the end. So I'll go through that again at the end about the EDTO critical point. This is an example of a, a fuel scenario breakdown for the ETP. So this is the equal time point between two diversion airports, usually turning back or turning forward um, to a diversion airport. So it is the point at which you are furthest away or you know, equal, equally furthest away in terms of time, not distance, um, from two 
on route alternates. So we are comparing LPLA Lages to TXKF, LF Wade, Bermuda. So we have our four fuel or emergency scenarios per airport. And that's why we have eight different fuel scenarios showing for this single ETP. And as Ralph mentioned, we have the most penalizing scenario for LPLA at ETP1 identified in italics and the same for TXKF identified in italics. And finally, at the end of the summary, the EXP. So very, very similar to the EEP. You know, the layout is, we're trying to make the layout the same. We're trying to make it easy so that you can understand one section, you can understand the next section. So the layout is the same. So everything now should be, should already be, be becoming quite familiar to you. You know, we're trying to use clear English, you know, and not use too many acronyms and use, or if we do use an acronym, make sure that it's a industry specified acronym. We haven't just made something up. So the same kind of layout displaying the final fuel scenarios at your EXP. And Joel? So just to show you, just to touch on this, we also um, produce an overflight report after the uh, EDTO summary. It may not be too useful for you for flying across the flying across the pond, as it were, um, but it's very useful if you're doing permits, etc. You know, down through Africa, maybe you're flying from, uh, you know, Ibiza down to Cape Town or something, and you have ten overflight permits. You may you may be flying over over seven FIRs, but nine countries, because we all know that the countries and the FIRs don't, don't line up in Africa. So it's very nice that this overflight report contains both country information and also FIR information, because that's that's always a tricky gotcha for, for new flight planners, in uh, particularly in areas of the world such as Africa. Um, charges, Ralph, do you want to touch on yeah. the uh, ATC charges? Yeah, so uh, we do give you a good hand uh, with your uh, overflow charges. We have all the data that is provided via Eurocontrol that's up to date, that's on a monthly basis. So in this case, you see the Eurocontrol portion would be roughly 2,000 euros excluding VAT. And we're working to get these other four lines uh, filled up as well. But it's a quite, I think a quite nice feature if you're doing a calculation of a business jet charter, how much is actually your overflight is going to cost you instead of doing a quote and then uh, you actually 2,000 in this case or even more, it will be more, it will be like something like 3,000 euros short on your quotation. So we're working on that as well and then you know, on the right hand side we've got the sector times and minutes and distances and I think that's a nice feature as well for the dispatcher and for sure for the commercial department. Perfect, so we're just back into our main user interface now. We're back with our route on the left-hand side and our, and our EDTO summary on the right-hand side. And we're just gonna show quickly how those two things marry up together. So we can see we have our EEP, EEP section, um, we have our ETP, just one ETP in this situ in this instance, and then we have our EXP in the final section. Thank you, Ralph. So we're going to move on to an area now about troubleshooting and prompts, and really, really try to move ETOPS and EDTO into the 21st century, and really try and make it something that's much more usable. Uh, safe, you know, really moving on the regulation and, and you know, approaching the regulation in a, in a different way. So we have CYYT here and we've changed the uh, airports that we're using to try and provide coverage. So we're using CYYT, St. John's in Canada. We have our EDTO spotlight so we can see that CYYT is providing which uh, coverage to a certain part of the route, so we can see what how CYYT is helping us create a compliant route. What what is it doing? What what is it helping? What is it contributing? Based on this zoom view, 
uh, seeing the whole route, you may it, it's easy to think that this flight plan is okay, that everything looks okay, that the route is going through the corners of the of the circles and everything is fine. Uh, and certainly in the past, you know, I've seen you know mistakes be made where people don't don't zoom in and don't look at these things and can, you know errors can find their way onto the flight deck, you know, where it causes delay for the flight plan, etc. So we're just going to go through a little bit of error. Um, working on errors and prompts and troubleshooting and, and how we can help you do that. So on the left hand side we have the route and it looks okay. But what the system is doing is it it looks at the geometry, it looks at the route and the circles continuously. And if it finds a problem, we will what we do, we will throw up um, a warning to, to, that will appear both in the user interface and if it's not fixed in the user interface by the flight planner, it will continue to, it will persist and it will show in the flight log as well, just on the top right hand corner there that Ralph is um, highlighting with the, with, the, uh, with the mouse. So let's have a bit, a bit of a more in depth look at those warnings. So this is the top section of the flight log. So it's right at the top of the flight log. So first thing you see, because it's that important, and we have a warning here that one or more route segments is outside your EDTO threshold or approval coverage. Amend your ETOPS entry point, exit point, or ERA aerodromes to ensure continuous coverage. So we're, we're looking out for you. The system is trying to, is, is interrogating your choices and we're trying to provide a plain, simple language assistance to help you spot these little errors that, that could creep through. So we have some more examples of the errors and warnings that are built into the system. So if your choice of airport actually doesn't intersect your route, and it does happen if you're playing around with different routes and different airports, sometimes a, a ring gap can be left out on its own and doesn't actually contribute to the to the problem you're trying to solve. We will we'll, we'll tell you that. We will tell you if your EXP and EEP are the wrong way round again. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to move fast, you know, and sometimes mistakes can happen. We're, we're trying to be that person that's looking out for you and helping you just avoid these little mistakes that, you know, we're all human that can, that can creep in from time to time. The, the one, um, the two important messages are on the right hand side. We talked about the EDTO critical point. And again, I'll just recap that. That's where the required fuel on board for diversion versus the planned fuel on board, the difference between those two values is the lowest compared to other points, significant points in your EDTO plan. And we have an example here that the that the required fuel for diversion was is four hundred and thirty seven pounds more and the planned fuel on board. So the system prompts you to add additional fuel, additional fuel being fuel required, legal fuel required for the flight rather than extra fuel added, added at discretion. And it tells you to switch to a manual or maximum off-block fuel scenario. We, we, we won't touch on that in this, uh, in this webinar, but the idea of Minimum, minimum fuel load, maximum fuel load, or manual fuel load is is a part of Rocket Route, uh, and I, I'm very sure we'll cover that in a, in a new in a webinar uh, coming soon. Thank you, Ralph. Anything to add? No, I think we we actually give a great hand to the uh, the dispatcher or even the pilot that has to do the dispatch on his own. Mm -hmm. And I think this feature, well, the spotlight, which we see here now, and this is like uh, now a zoomed in section of uh, the route we had before, where it actually shows you exactly where your route is not within the limits. And again, as you said, uh, these errors can be made. Uh, you do a quick flight plan, you think it's okay. And if it wouldn't pop up with those errors, uh, you would never see until it gets to the flight deck. Over to you, Rob. Thank you. Let's uh, next slide. I can see we're uh, we're going to try and stay stay on track here. We have sort of uh, ten minutes or so to go, so we promised you it would be an hour. 
And so that's what that's what we'll try and do. And again, this is just an example that you know the route has just gone outside your approval coverage. It's easy to miss this kind of thing. So, but our computer is never going to miss this. And so this is this idea of this geometry checking that's going on in the background all the time. And if it throws up an error like this, we will we will tell you, we will help you. So here's an example. Just we know that EDTO involves playing around with the airports, you know, adjusting your route, adjusting your airports. You know, maybe you check the weather and the weather minimums aren't correct for your era. Maybe your weather's okay, but maybe a NOTAM means you can't operate to that airport because a particular navigational aid is is not functioning, etc. So we need to make sure that you can change your airports uh, easily and quickly. So that's what we're demonstrating now. You, you can easily just add and remove eras um as as you need to no problem at all and the system will recalculate in a few seconds filing ralph yeah that's it it's actually a, a, a two-step process so we're happy with our route we've done all our calculations you just hit the next button and uh, off you go you're ready to file we will show you some route advisories which are up here in the upper left corner in yellow and if we just click the view button, uh, we'll see what it what it's entitled. So we'll show you if there's a runway closure where you're going, if you need a PPR or slot for the airport. So we're just highlighting it. We're not telling you not to file, but, but again, we're just giving you a, a heads up on this. And uh, all these these are actually hyperlinks. So if there's a notum to it, you just can click it, Notums opens uh, in another uh, page. The next, uh, sorry, um, so the next is just uh, click on the file button. Uh, we do give you an overview of what is filed for you, and that's it. Um, the next, you will see your flight in green. I'm not going to do this in this case, this is live system. This will turn green, and this is your flight, and then uh, on the right hand side uh, we have uh, since a couple of months a new design where you can click on the green button and then make changes and uh, delay the flight by bring it forward uh, change your crew uh, change even the routing if you want without uh, losing the slot you have um, but that we will cover up in a different webinar as well over we will do a, a quick one because we're 54 already uh, on the aircraft set, uh, setup uh, we've decided we'll do uh, actually a separate web webinar because um, we do tend not to over complicate things but we tend to do them right so our fuel calculation uh, each aircraft is actually built as the aircraft is as you all know no aircraft is the same as uh, as the other one coming out of factory so we actually built these uh, the, these aircraft and um, there is a lot of, uh, of setups you can do it's fully configurable for any scenario you can uh, think of any regulation if it's a EASA, if it's FAA or if it's some African country country um, you can uh, use our system so it's not only a drop down where it says do this rule or do the other rule. Anything to add from your side, Rob? Um, I would I would echo what Ralph is saying. Um, it, it does take a few moments to to set uh, EDTO up properly. It's highly configurable, so it's a feature that is going to work for multiple um, regulations um, produced by various authorities, where something has been set by one authority but not by another that's a setting so it can be configurable so we can have aircraft with different approval levels and different interpretations of approved speeds etc so it's all configurable to a very very high level of detail so we can give you exactly what you need and the aircraft and calculations can, can perform to exactly what you need on a, on a per aircraft level yes absolutely so just to just see how much detail we go down to these are just snapshots of uh, the aircraft setup only for the EDTO. So just a quick one. This is the EDTO threshold calculation. The next one is the approval area calculation. 
your ETP calculation, scenario parameters, one engine inoperative, depressurization, depressurization with one engine operative. So we've decided really to do a webinar only on this. Uh, it will take us maybe 45 minutes if we go down in deep, uh, but we were just wanted to show you how much in detail we go down to this. Okay, uh, coming to the Q&A session, um, I have grabbed a couple of, uh, of questions. Um, thank you for all the questions that have come in and please uh, keep them coming in. Um, we will answer as many as we can right now. We wanted to keep it to an hour. If we overrun by 10, uh, it's fine by us, but we would like to keep it to an hour. And I just want to assure you that every single question that you have made, you will get a personal answer from us or even a phone call and uh, we'll do it on a one-to-one. -one. But thank you very much for those questions. Um, I have done a couple, uh, so do I need an account at Rocket Root to be able to uh, do this new feature? Uh, yes, you need. Uh, so we'll put in the answer here, you need a Jet Plan account. And uh, please reach out to us at sales.rocketroot.com if you don't have one, and uh, we'll try to fix your problem immediately. And uh, we will do a bespoke uh, thing as well. So it's not cast in stone. Um, every operator is a little bit different, so we can switch on and off uh, features for every single operator. And I think Rob said it in the, in the beginning, yes, we will give you a, a copy of the webinar um, and this copy of the webinar will be published uh, and uh, you can then go back in it in detail. And uh, I think that's fine. Um, next one for you, Rob, <laughs> for example. How do I set it up and start using it? Um, <laughs> big question. Just, just get it, just get in touch, uh, yeah. email, phone. Uh, if you, if you, even if you ask us a question now, uh, you know, even if you just tell us on in the webinar, guys, can you give us a call next week? I'm free on Tuesday. You know, we, that all gets logged by our system, you know, and we can call you at a better, at, a, at an appropriate and a, a good time for you. If you want us to call you in the evening, you know, when you finished homeschooling uh, your children, that's fine. Um, just write that question and write that, write that request and, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. No problem. Yeah, and can you arrange a follow-up call and go through in more detail? Absolutely. Uh, we can do one-on-ones and that in several languages. I'm just thinking uh, from English, Spanish, German, uh, French, uh, Finnish. Uh, I think we cover a lot of languages and we would love to do one-on-ones. So we actually do webinars. And as I said before, uh, every operator is different and everyone has a different uh, operation uh, philosophy. So um, we we will do that gladly do that just uh, get in touch with us if you want uh, you have the opportunity now just click on the the question question mark write your question uh, tell us to give you a call back and we will do that Rob this one is for you <laughs> do we support three and four engine aircraft yes we do so the feature is EDTO the feature isn't twin air, twin engine so we provide settings that enable you to do one less engine settings so from four engines to three engines and three engines to two engines so those of you with the 747 cargo aircraft and those of you with your dasso 7x and 8x aircraft please do get in touch and we'll set you up accordingly no worries i think we've, we've touched on this one already uh, but that's for you as well Rob, for the critical point. yeah if you have sufficient insufficient fuel at the critical point the key message to us is that we will generate a warning to you and we will prompt you to, to take action that's the main message here that we're always looking out for you and we will always generate that message if we get that trigger and that message will show both for the flight planner and for the flight crew so there are two opportunities to catch that error and fix it so there isn't a safety case you know or a safety issue um, further down the line that's that's the main message here yeah absolutely so and next question i'm furloughed and not working currently as many of us are working from home until this situation passes uh, can you still try it absolutely of course sign up at the rocketroot.com um but to get a better experience, really, just drop us a line at sales at rocketroot.com. We'll get in touch with you. 
we'll set up your aircraft and we get you going in, in no time, absolutely. And if someone, uh, I think this was David asking this, uh, he's not in charge of the software. Um, can you? Can we help him? Yes, for sure we can. Uh, we will work with you to get the, build the business case and uh, and and get you going in no time. And, and absolutely, Rocket Root is, I think, uh, a slight different uh, approach to flight planning. It's cloud-based. You don't need to uh, to install anything. It's not like 30 years ago. And uh, absolutely, we can make a business case and and help you there. Any questions you just want to answer, Rob? I think we're exactly on the um, hour. I'm, I'm conscious. I would like to thank everyone for the very high Absolutely. level of question. Um, we are going to have to take some moments to answer some of these questions in detail. So it's an absolute credit uh, to you guys that you're asking really very, very important questions. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, we are making the decision that we are going to come back to you with those answers. Um, just so we can do that in detail and we're at the hour mark as well. So keep coming with the detailed questions and we, we promise to uh, get back to you on those. Uh, and just while I have the microphone, I would just like to say, obviously, thank you for your time. Uh, it's it's great to uh, do one of these webinars for a feature that we're really proud of. Um, you know, thank you for your time. Um, you know, stay safe, you know, as an aviation community, you know, we'll come out the other side and uh, and we'll see you there. So. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. From my side as well. Uh, thank you, everybody. That you've taken the time to uh, to join us in this webinar. And please, um, to get started, as it, the slide says, uh, just log on to rocketroot.com if you don't have an account. If you do have an account and you don't have a jet account, then please contact us at sales at rocketroot.com and we'll get in touch with you immediately and get you set up and in no time you'll be flying and please as rob said uh, please stay safe and many happy landings for those that are still flying and uh, i'll see you on the next webinar thank you very much everybody <laughs>